Hey, that's a good one right there. All right, good morning, everybody. As you can see, I am awake, I am alive, and I am thanking God for another day. When I woke up this morning, I was thinking about a song, and, and then the words of a, of a song from way back came to my head. It's, Sleeper, arise from the dead, spending your life in the bed. The world is weeping while you are sleeping. Sleeper, well, I forgot the rest of it, but anyway, what's your alibi? But anyway, as I woke up, I said, Lord, I thank you for another breath, and I am truly thankful for another breath. So let us give God praise with the one that we have right now in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for another day that you have allowed me to be awake. And Lord God, I pray that you will just have your way in my life, our lives, all over this world, Lord Jesus. Let the heart of repentance spring forth, Lord Jesus. Let your people praise you before a day and hour is too late. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So as you can see, I said some thoughts from Ecclesiastes. And good morning. How you doing, Sandy Hungerford? So we, I'm going to go into the book of Ecclesiastes. I might skip around a little bit, but for right now, <clears throat> I'm going to look. Oh, I can't get, my, can't get myself together this morning. Hold on for a minute. There we go. <clears throat> for the time being, I'm going to um, look at Ecclesiastes chapter five because there are some words in here that we all can utilize for right now. In verse one of chapter five, Ecclesiastes says this. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. But they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to other anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon the earth, therefore let thy words be few. Good morning, Tommy. Thank you, thank you, Sandy. <clears throat> For a dream cometh um, through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by multitudes of words. This is the this was a good one right here. Listen to this: When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he have no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is it that thou should not vow, than that thou should vow and not pay. <laughs> this is one here, this is juicy right here, check this out. It says, suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin, neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the works of thy hand? For in the multitude of dreams and many words, there are also divers vanities, but fear, Thou God, and um, and when I was young, coming up in the church, it was like if you make a vow, whatever the vow is, I promise to, and that comes with you know how people will ask you to borrow money, and when you say the word borrow, that means you are saying I plan to pay it back. Well, a lot of times you don't get your money back, and I was talking to somebody, and it was like if you. Um, you never be poor as long as you somebody owe you money or some something like that. I'm like I'd rather to have my money back, you know, to that point. But Ecclesiastes is 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 talking to us today because um, if you look at it here, let's let's read it from NIV. When you make a vow to God, do not delay in fulfilling it. He has no pleasure in fools. Fulfill your vow. It is better not to vow than to make a vow and not fulfill it. And that is absolutely correct. A lot of times, like um, you're on your sickbed or you're in a financial crunch or you um, scared for whatever reason, Some, something in your life has, has got you afraid. And you make this vow, Lord, if you get me out of this one, I promise you I will. That's a vow. And if you've made it, it is best for you to go ahead on and honor up. Um, I'm trying very hard not to make promises that I can't keep. And if I can't keep a specific promise, like if I tell somebody I'm coming, like I told my mom, I, my, my biological mother is still alive. 
And I told her that I was going to come down to see her. And I do plan to go down to see her. But my body just cannot, at that time and at this time, take that long trip. And so I've been putting it off, but I've kept her in a loop. And by the grace of God, I'm going to get myself down there. But the thing of it is, is that I hate, you know, we use that word hate. We throw it out of our mouths. But I don't like telling somebody I'm going to do something and then don't, con don't complete it. And a lot of times I've forgotten things. So it is best that if I told you I, wanted, I was going to do something and if you remind me, good. That, that'll be better than for you to sit there and stew in your juices and be mad at me for not doing what, it's, what I said I was going to do. Okay, that was about Val from Ecclesiastes. I met a preacher one day years ago, and his name right now is Bishop Thomas McBride, Sacramento, California. And he said something, and I was like, that is not true. And he said this. He says, anger rests in the, bos in the, in the bosom of fools. And I said, that ain't no scripture. So what did I do? I did a, a word search. Came to Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and listened to what it said. Be not hasty, verse 9 of chapter 7, Ecclesiastes says. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. For anger rests in the bosom of fools. I was shocked. And that is so true. We hold on to anger so deliciously. We act like it is the best thing to do. Ooh, I am angry with you, and I'm going to hold that into my heart. Isn't that sad? And the Bible says that that's a fool. For anger, according to NASB, for anger resides in the bosom of fools. Forgive it, forgive, whatever it is, forgive it, get over it, <laughs> don't be angry. And then in verse one of chapter seven, Ecclesiastes says this, a good name is better than precious ointment and the day of death than the day of one's birth. Who exactly are you from the moment you took your first breath until this moment right now? Who really are you? Whose are you? Are you a child of God? Or are you just somebody that's just walking around making a lot of noise? And I pray that that's not Robin Brooks, okay? Because I, I, um, I got a mission. And I got, to get, I got to be busy about it, right? Got to be busy about it. And one of our last ones, let me see. I think this is, uh, yes, okay. Coming from Ecclesiastes chapter nine, and I'll read verse three to you. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all, yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live. And after that, they go to the dead. I pray, I really pray that your heart will release the things, release the hurts, release the pain, the bitterness, that your heart, that you will love the Lord God so much that you would release. You will release the anger, the malice within your heart. If you've been following the Bible study that I have been um, talking on, um, you will know, notice that I gave you a lot of different scriptures and I hit a little bit on the heart because your heart, if you do not allow the Lord Jesus into your heart, as a matter of fact, let me try and turn to that. What is that? Jeremiah 17. You've got to allow the Lord into your heart so that it can take care of that situation that is in there. 
Listen, well, I said it was going to be in Ecclesiastes, but I want to jump right now because when, when that scripture, that scripture got me just now. I don't know if it got you, but that 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 scripture that I just read from Ecclesiastes, that was different because it reminds me to go here and then I'm going to end. It reminds me to go to um, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 and 10. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Only you. You know what you're holding on to. You got an idea of what you're holding on to. It says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. I pray that your heart right now has softened up enough to allow the Holy Spirit of Lord Jesus Christ to come in. So that is my prayer for today. I pray that you received some nuggets of inspiration from the word of God today. And I pray that you will continue to live as God wants you to live. And to remember that scripture that I read to you this morning. Um, let me go back to it. Let me see if I can find it again here. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 3. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for another moment, another breath, another praise, another soul that is accepting your Holy Spirit. In Christ's name, amen. So be blessed of the Lord. Know that I love you, and I'm trusting that God is able to do all things. Praising God for your um, deliverance from the hospital, Sandy. And I pray that you will continue to get better each and every day. God bless you, Tommy Seaburn. Take care, everybody. Peace be unto you. Sister Brooks out. <laughs>